All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Mixed Martial Arts. My name is Austin Shaper, and this is now a daily show where we cover the topics of UAP, UFC, and World War III. Today is going to be a UFC episode breaking down the big pay-per-view happening this Saturday, UFC 292. I've been waiting for this one for quite some time. I'm really excited about it. Off the bat, I got to tell you guys, I'm super tired. It's early in the morning, and that's usually when I record these episodes, but I'm extra sleepy this morning and probably look like an extra from The Walking Dead because uh, I told you guys we got a new dog, a new puppy, a few weeks back. We named him Mateo. Uh, he's a little papillon. Uh, they kind of look like ch- chihuahua mixes with like kind of like a fox with like long ears, hair, long hairy ears, and he's adorable. He's practically perfect. The only thing is that he can't hold his pee all night, so come like three, four, five in the morning, uh, he really has to go to the bathroom, which sucks for me because I'm in like a deep space sleep at that point, and I got to wake up, you know, take care of that, then go back to bed, and then, uh, you know, I wake up like three hours later. So I'm exhausted, but that's okay. We'll get through it, and... Um, before we dive in, do me a favor. If you guys like this type of content, uh, just go ahead, subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Uh, click like on the video. That helps me uh, for the algorithm show it to new people. Uh, it seems that it's been doing that lately, so it seems like it's working. That's really cool to see. And uh, we've got listeners. I should have saved the screenshot from the podcast app, but we got we got listeners from all over the place on the podcast, um, like the audio-only version, and it's super cool. So many different countries, so I love to see that. Um, if you guys are listening on the podcast apps, just uh, click follow, leave a five-star review. And lastly, if you guys want to be a part of the conversation every day with a little community that's growing, we talk about this stuff, UFC news, um, geopolitical stuff, uh, UAP events that are happening, um, all that, our experiences, our opinions, topics. Uh, I made a Discord called Mixed Martian Arts, find it in the description of this video. Um, and it's fun to just talk back and forth with people. If you guys want to be a part of something like that, go ahead and join it. Uh, diving into today's episode about the card, you guys probably know, um, hopefully I'm not bringing you up to speed. If you guys are watching this video, I would assume you guys check out this uh, UFC uh, content quite frequently. But maybe I'm breaking some news. Uh, we got Sean O'Malley facing uh, Aljamain Sterling for the belt this Saturday. This is a very interesting matchup from my point of view, because one one weird detail that I think is going to kind of like throw a curveball in this whole thing is the fact that, uh, you know, Al Jermaine is coming off of a very recent victory against a uh, five-round decision against uh, Henry Cejudo. And uh, one, I think, I think he's getting kind of a bad deal here, uh, Al Jermaine. You know, I think it's unfair to have him uh, turn around and face a contender as dangerous as O'Malley in such a short period of time. And uh, he talked about it after the Cejudo victory many times about how, you know, he wanted to heal up, he wanted to rest, recover, and just kind of mentally reset. And people were hard on him, uh, as usual. People are always hard on Aljamain for, I guess, started stemming back to the way he won the belt with the... Uh, you know, uh, Peter Yawn knee to the downed opponent. Everyone says he's like a, you know, Oscar actor. Um, and you hear all that stuff. So he's kind of got a bad reputation. I don't know why. I'm a huge fan of Al Jermaine. He's amazing. And uh, if anything, that last victory over Henry Cejudo, to me, was so impressive. It, I don't. It got minimized a little bit in the community. And I guess that is probably because... It wasn't like the most exciting fight. It was very grappling heavy. Nobody got close to being finished. And I suppose that's why, but at the end of the day, to have that name, Henry Cejudo, on your resume as uh, Aljamain Sterling, I mean, to me, it puts him as the greatest bantamweight of all time, without a doubt, because, uh, you know, the only person I think that he could face that would even further cement that would be Dominic Cruz, just because of the history. But Dominic's not really in a position to be able to fight uh, Aljamain right now anyway. Plus, I think we were pretty confident about how that fight would go. Uh, personally, that's how I feel. But it was such an impressive victory, and the fact that the UFC pressured him and coaxed him into, I wouldn't even say coaxed, um, it didn't seem like they offered him the carrot, it seemed like they offered him the stick. So he he took the fight against uh, Sean O'Malley. I don't know the exact turnaround time, but it can't be more than, like, what, three months uh, maybe four, I don't know, I honestly don't know, but not a long time at all, uh, especially coming off of a five-round decision, it's not like, it's not like he KO'd, uh, Cejudo in the first round and got no injuries and, uh, no wear and tear on the body, it wasn't like that at all, it was a, you know, drag him out fight for five rounds, 
So, and Al Jermaine himself um, said that he felt pressured by the UFC. And it, it leads you to the whole conversation. We've talked about it time and time again about the UFC pressuring their, they have this rigid schedule and this weird need to have a title fight uh, on every single pay-per-view. I find that to be so odd. I think they think their fans are stupid and they're only interested if we see a belt. I don't think they're reading the room well on that one because uh, there's so many great fights you could make um, a main event in a pay-per-view card that doesn't have to be uh, for the belt, you know. And then we just saw Dustin and Justin and they made a fake belt, you know, they did the BMF which I have mixed opinions on it, but it just shows you this weird uh, desire from the UFC to constantly have a champion at the top of the card. I get it. It's for sales. At the end of the day, you don't have enough weight classes and enough champions to be able to do that consistently. I mean, we just saw now Israel Adesanya is like six weeks out or something like that from his title fight with uh, Sean Strickland, and the fight just got announced. So and they had nobody else. We, we were sitting there for weeks like, who on earth is he going to even fight? And it put Sean Strickland, who, albeit, uh, you know, he's one of the top contenders in the division, but I don't know if he deserves a title shot. And it's just because he's there and he just come off of a TKO victory. So they give him the title shot, but just opens up this weird precedent and this weird pressure on uh, champions. And it's like if, if Al Jermaine loses this fight, it, in my opinion, depending on how he looks, uh, you know, depending on how he looks, I think it gives him a little bit of a defense to come back and be like, look, I told you guys I wasn't ready for this fight anyway, and you pressured me into taking it. I wasn't ready. My performance wasn't what it could have been. If he makes that argument, I don't know that I would disagree with it. It's fair. I don't think he should have taken this fight. I want to see these two guys at their 100% mental and physical best to see who really is the better fighter, and I don't think we're getting that. Although, uh, the counterpoint to that would be that Aljamain is looking absolutely yoked right now. He's looking strong. He's looking fierce. So uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. But uh, And obviously, once Aljamain kind of ac accepted, okay, I am taking this fight. I don't have a choice, uh, yada, yada. And now it seems like his mindset has really switched, and he is putting in the effort and the work, which I didn't doubt that from the beginning. I just think that the body needs to heal. The mind needs to heal going through these long training camps and uh, – if they opened up more weight classes, which I would love to see, more opportunities for people to become champion and more champions to be able to head these pay-per-view cards so you don't have to have situations like this Israel Adesanya, six week out, find out your opponent, and a situation like this with Aljamain where uh, he's got a quick turnaround and he's hesitant to take it, then he takes it, and it's like, all right, too late now. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Sean O'Malley's had plenty of time since his last fight against Peter Yawn. Plenty of time, I think over a year, to be ready for this fight, uh, knowing he has a title fight coming. Uh, Al Jermaine fought, you know, debatably one of the, ba well, definitely one of the best bantamweights of all time in Cejudo, and then now has to do a quick turnaround against, uh, you know, a very dangerous, ready Sean O'Malley. So, that being said, I don't know if I'm in the business of predicting cards. I am just fascinated with talking about them. I'm no expert. I always tell you guys that. But if I was going to predict this fight, I still got to say Aljamain Sterling gets it done. I think so. I think after seeing him beat Cejudo, um, seeing him beat Dillashaw, seeing him run through Corey Sanhagen, I mean, just the, the resume this dude's got is so impressive. And while it, it's one of those weird unorthodox fighters where it's like, you see him up on the standing up and his striking, and it's not like anything to write home about. It's not amazing. It's it's uh, it's awkward. It's strange. Uh, sometimes it's effective. Sometimes it's more of just like a distraction so that he can get into the clinch and then take the back and do what he does. And it's interesting because, like I said, there's a lot of mixed opinions on Aljamain, uh, but the jury's out. He's amazing. I mean, you can only look at his resume and say that dude's amazing, and for him to smash uh, Cejudo is beyond impressive. So I think you have to favor Aljamain. I think that uh, his stand-up could be a problem. It could get him into some dicey situations. With O'Malley, if he comes in confident and wanting to prove, like, okay, I can strike with this dude. I don't think he can. I think uh, the reach advantage... Uh, the speed of O'Malley, the trick, the trickery with the setups and the feints. Uh, I think it's a dangerous game for uh, Sterling to play, and we all know that if he is going to win, it's most likely going to be through the grappling. It could result in maybe not the most exciting fight, him uh, kind of constantly going for the submission, putting him up against the cage, trying to take the back. Uh, we know that... We know that uh, Sean O'Malley actually has a good grappling game, and don't take that from my... Uh, 
point of view, take that from a lot of the experts and the former professionals and current professionals who have come out and spoken in high regard of O'Malley's uh, grappling uh, jiu-jitsu. So I don't think that it's like a, a black and white fight where it's like, okay, if Aljamain uh, gets gets uh, O'Malley down a couple of times, that's a wrap. Or if he takes his back once, that's a wrap. I don't think it's uh, that black and white. I think that... Uh, the lankiness of O'Malley leads him to be able to, he, he'll probably be able to stand up a few times. I can see him getting out of submission attempts. I can see him um, putting up a good fight in the jiu-jitsu and grappling department. But at the same time, we obviously know O'Malley wants to stand on the feet. Uh, he wants to keep it on the feet, and uh, Sterling wants to um, get get close. And that's the dynamic in this fight. We all know that. Um, Sean O'Malley has come out and said as much. But I'm going to go in favor of Aljamain with a five-round decision. I think that... It's going to be very hard to finish O'Malley. We've never seen O'Malley finished. Uh, we've seen the injury, and then which led to the TKO from um, Cheeto Vera. But, you know, that obviously had a bit of a question mark on it, and uh, he didn't look like he was about to go out or anything like that when the ref called the fight. I think he was just compromised, and the ref saw that this was going to go nowhere good, so he stopped the fight. But we've never seen O'Malley flatline, never seen him, you know, never seen him submitted in the UFC, I don't think. No. So. A very, very interesting matchup. The only asterisk I put on this is, as I mentioned, I think that um, it would have been better for Aljamain to wait. Clearly, he doesn't have the power and the, uh, I guess, the he doesn't have the leverage to be able to dictate that to the UFC, even as the Bantamweight champion. So, interesting. We'll have to, uh, I guess, reevaluate that point at the end of the fight and see what Aljamain has to say about it. I'm going to Aljamain, but I can absolutely see O'Malley finishing this fight, even in the first round. I can see him coming out sharp and quick and fast, stopping the takedowns, uh, breaking the clinch, and keeping the distance, and landing some crazy head kick. I can see it happening, absolutely. Or even an uppercut as Aljamain tries to close the distance. Uh, anything's possible. I'm going with Aljamain. Co-main, we got Weili Zhang, uh, Zhang Weili, and um, Amanda Limos. I don't know much about Amanda Limos' career. Um, she's got a record of 13-2. But I don't want to sit here and pretend that I do. So I don't. I don't even know if I've watched her fight live before. Uh, I saw a lot of people in the comments on the UFC page saying like, uh, you know, Amanda's cool, but why on earth did she get this fight? The obvious, an uh, you know, fighting for the belt. The obvious answer to that would be that there's not that many people to compete in this division at the top of it. And uh, Zhang Wei Li has kind of run through the competition. She's coming off of a submission of Carla Esparza, and then before that, the uh, nasty finish of uh, Joanna. Uh, young Jay Chick, and uh, yeah, so she's on a, on a win streak, she's got the belt right now, looking sharp, looking amazing, uh, she kind of is always here at the top, even when she didn't have the belt, everybody knew this is one of the best fighters in the women's strawweight division, so I'm excited for this fight, I gotta favor uh, Zhang Wei Li in this one, I think she gets it done by finish, uh, she's a monster, and uh, my only thing is I wish there was more competition for her to fight, I wish uh, Joanna didn't retire, uh, and that, you know, maybe they could have done a rematch one day, I don't know. That's the only thing with some of these women divisions. There's some great fights that happen, some amazing fights. Um, her and Rose, uh, one and two, are both great. But at the end of the day, there's just not the quite the level of competition that they have in some of the other weight classes. Uh, there's not that many contenders. And so you get people like Amanda Limos, you know, good for her. She gets an amazing opportunity, and you never know. She could get it done. Uh, we saw what happened to Valentina Shevchenko. So anything can happen, uh, but, you know... I think that uh, Zhang Weili gets it done by finish, and we'll say the second round, just so that I can look really smart if that's how it happens. We can go back and post this video. Moving on, we've got the Ian Gary uh, versus Neil Magny fight. This one just got changed recently because Jeff Neil pulled out, I think, last week with an injury. I don't know what the injury was, but I was honestly extremely disappointed, and I always get scared as fight day approaches on these big cards because it always seems like we're going to lose one or two good fights on the on the card on the main card and we lost two on this one we lost the Ian, uh, Ian Gary Jeff Neal fight which I thought stylistically was just a fantastic matchup I thought that was going to be a, a huge proving test for Ian Gary and um, also on the flip side an opportunity for Jeff Neal to show everybody he still got it and to stop the next up-and-coming uh, talent potential superstar in Ian Gary. Very, very disappointed that fight got scrapped, I gotta say. But the flip side of that and the optimistic side would be that Ian Gary's still on the card, which is amazing. I would have hated if he was just taken off the card and the fight got pushed back, you know, another three months. He is fighting Neil Magny, who is coming off of a decision win. 
And then previous to that, he got submitted by uh, Gilbert Burns in like a minute or two minutes in the first round uh, earlier, I think this year. I believe it was this year, yeah. And uh, or perhaps it was even late last year. Hard to remember off the top of my head. But point being, he's on a one-fight win streak. Uh, Neil Magny, I am a fan of. I think he might even have the most wins in the welterweight division. I'm pretty sure that could be the case. Don't don't uh, write that. Don't take that check to the bank, but I think so. I think he's got the most wins in welterweight division. He's amazing. It's just you never know what you're going to get with him. He's very up and down. He's got a record of 28 and 11, and he's just very up and down, very grappling heavy. He's very lanky, and he does have good striking, but it's almost like that he doesn't utilize it in to the degree that I believe he is physically capable of doing uh, for whatever reason. He just comes out hot sometimes. Other times, he's just kind of wishy-washy, and um, I think that... You know, the fact that he is coming in on short notice and cutting that weight and Ian Gary is on such a hot streak at 12-0 and 0 right now. He's undefeated and he's just smashing the competition right now and he's got uh, that Conor McGregor vibe going on for him. I got to favor Ian Gary. Uh, does Ian Gary get the finish? I think... I think no. I think that Neil Magny, whether he uh, could win this or not, I do think he's going to put up a good fight, and I think he's going to lean on that grappling, try to push uh, Ian Gary up against the cage. I think he's going to be um, an awkward stylistic matchup. I don't know what to make of this one. I'm just going to go with Ian Gary, though. Um, big fan of both of these guys, but at the end of the day, I am uh, very disappointed that the Jeff Neal fight didn't happen. Next up, you got uh, Cheeto Marlon, Marlon Cheeto Vera versus Pedro Munoz. This is a good fight. This actually is kind of a sleeper on the card. I haven't heard many people excited about this one. Uh, Cheeto Vera is coming off of that horrible loss to uh, San Hagen, where it just looked like he couldn't get going. He was like frozen like a deer in headlights, which is like something I never really expect to see from Cheeto. He does come out the gate kind of slow in round one. We always hear that from him, but he kind of never got out of first gear in that fight. It was a... Uh, odd and it kind of kind of made people hesitate like okay we kind of we jumped on the hype train deservedly so for Cheeto Vera but uh is Cheeto ready for like a belt a title fight I think that really put a dampen I, I think that extended the run he's gonna have to make before he gets a title shot uh but fighting Pedro Munoz he gets a finish over Pedro um that would be absolutely impressive and I think you could merit a title shot soon after um an impressive victory over Munoz this weekend, if it does happen. Uh, Pedro is no slouch, though, man. He has got a, quite the resume. Um, you guys know he's finished Cody Garbrandt. He's had uh, all kinds of fights. Uh, Jose Aldo, Dominic Cruz, the list goes on. He's amazing, man. He just uh, kind of falls short of being one of the best at the top of the division. But, I mean, he is a scary uh, gatekeeper. And I don't say gatekeeper in a bad way. I mean, he is impressive. And this is by no means an easy fight for Cheeto. Uh, maybe Cheeto makes it look easy, but... Uh, the stylistic matchup should uh, result in a very good fight with this one. I'm going with Cheeto Vera. I think that he comes back. I think that he learned his lesson. Whatever mental block that he was having that caused him to be so hesitant in the Sanhagen fight, I think he resolves that. I think he gets this done. I think it's going to go to decision. I think Pedro is very difficult to finish. And uh, yeah, we're going Cheeto decision. That's it for the main card. We lost Cody Garbrandt. Like I said, we always lose one or two good fights, and I was really excited to see C Cody come back. He uh, got a decision win in his last fight, and he kind of just edged by. It wasn't like C seeing Cody of uh, the old days. You know, He did kind of have the dancing around, and you saw flashes of it, but he was also getting touched up in that third round. And you know, But at the end of the day, he's an Ohio guy like myself, so I love watching Cody, and I was very disappointed to see him get off this card. I'm not going to go through the prelims, but we got RoboCop fighting um, on the prelims, which love him. He's always a great fight, uh, so we'll be checking that out. That's pretty much it for the card. It's kind of a, I feel like there's less fights on this one than usual. How many on the main card? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five. Or, no, four on the main card, and then I think there's even a couple less on the on the uh, prelim. Interesting. I guess there's going to be a lot of commercials, a lot of uh, fill-in time between fights so that they can stretch this thing out. Starts at 10 o'clock Eastern time. I absolutely hate that because it doesn't get done until like 1 in the morning, depending on if it's a decision in the main event. So hate that, but 
you know, what are you going to do? I'm so excited for this card. I'll come back, obviously, probably Sunday morning with a kind of a recap if anything interesting happens. I love talking about this stuff. And my videos where I talk about UFC never get the most uh, attention or views. And that's 100% uh, okay with me. At the end of the day, this is my channel, and I love talking about this stuff. Even if not that many people listen to the UFC content, that's 100% okay. I love having a UFC guest like we did with my buddy Cam a few weeks back. I'm going to continue to do that. And uh, yeah, I just love talking about it, man. At the end of the day, you got to do what you love, regardless of uh, you know what videos could potentially be bigger. People love when I talk about the Uf uh, UFO phenomenon and the World War III stuff, and it's a slow burn with the UFC content, but we don't care over here at Mixed Motion Arts. We do not care. I guess I should briefly cover uh, some reactions and uh, some opinions that people have about this card. Uh, let's go here on the UFC uh, Instagram page. Um, this comes from Andrey Shapurnakov says, I don't think O'Malley has what it takes to beat Aljo. I do think he has what it takes, but does he get it done? That's a whole other question. I think it's very, very difficult to beat Aljo right now. Uh, but I do think he has the advantage in that he's been ready for this fight for a long, long time, knowing that whether Cejudo was going to win the belt or uh, Aljamain was going to win, keep the belt, you're going to have a grappling heavy uh, opponent. And so he's been ready for this. So I guarantee you he's been training for this. He's ready uh, mentally, physically, and uh, Aljo's got that quick turnaround. So if there was ever a time to beat Aljo, it's it's right now for O'Malley. Absolutely. He's got to be, um, he's got the card stacked in his favor. Um, Al Dumasi says, sugar via knee on downed opponent. Ha, 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 ha. That would be um, very ironic if that happened to poor Aljamain again. Also, if he did knee a downed opponent, he wouldn't win. Sally, he would uh, get disqualified. That's exactly how Aljamain won the belt, Goober. Um, send me location, says, I think Sterling will win. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, you got to favor Aljo, but you can't count out uh, O'Malley. It's that simple. Uh, Nurk2305 says, I like Lemos, talking about Amanda Lemos, but how did she get the title fight? As we explained, it's because it's a uh, scarce division. There's not that many contenders who can uh, fill the ranks here. Uh, young tuber fox says don't sleep on o'malley's grappling i feel the same way i think it's uh we just haven't gotten to see it all that often but it's uh held in very high regard by other professionals and he's even had uh, grappling tournaments against uh, gilbert burns you know all the way up from 170 gilbert burns is at so yeah i don't know what weight they actually grappled at but yeah man o'malley's impressive in all regards you just haven't really gotten to see the grappling much um Unprospectly says, uh, un unprospectly says, uh, Sean's winning this. Very possible, man. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, Hash Lord says, worst card of the year. Huh? I don't know about that, man. Worst card of the year. I think that's a stretch. I'm not going to say it is the best card of the year, but no, not the worst card. You're silly. What a silly opinion. Don't watch it then, but you will, though. Uh, Robert Patilio says, there's just no promotion at all for this. I feel like it feels like how the Volk versus Islam fight was. Yeah, I haven't seen it all that much. Um, that, that being said, it's Tuesday, so it's fight week. I uh, guarantee you we're going to see the ramp up with the UFC embedded and um, the UFC countdown show. So, yeah, I agree. I haven't seen all that much hype around this. Uh, we know that Dana is not the biggest fan of Aljamain Sterling, so perhaps that rolls into this. Um, Eak88, God, people got the weirdest names on the internet, says, let's hope Sean knocks out the actor. The actor. I told you, everyone thinks he's an actor. Uh, Aljamain, he's not. He's definitely not. Now, that specific incident that people refer to, was he acting? I don't know. I've gone back and forth about that one, but, you know, that's water to the bridge that's in the past. Uh, Sean could definitely finish him, no doubt about it. You might get what you're asking for. Um, I guess, you know, real quick, I will cover the, um, just very briefly, the uh, fight night that just happened last weekend. Uh, Vicente Luque versus um, RDA. I didn't watch the whole fight. I was busy, so I don't have much to comment on that. I only got to, I think, like round two, and I had to turn it off, and then I ended up seeing that it was a decision victory, not all that exciting, supposedly, for Vicente Luque, so I didn't end up going back to it yet. Um, you know, props for him for getting the victory. We know he was coming off of that, like, brain hemorrhage bleeding incident, which potentially could have taken him out of his career forever, which is absolutely horrifying to think of from his perspective. So, you know, props to him for getting the victory. I heard that he was very grappling heavy, but it was due to the fact that RDA kept initiating the clinch, and then, uh, you know, getting molly whopped by Vicente. Now, the fight that I did watch, these two, uh, Cub Swanson versus Hakeem uh, Dawadu, Cub Swanson got the victory, uh, three-round decision, and then he even came out and said right in the post-fight that he didn't think he won, and a lot of people obviously on the UFC page were saying robbery, robbery, worst robbery of all time. How did I feel about it? I felt that Cub lost the fight. 
at the end, but when they announced Cub winning, I honestly was not irritated. I thought that it was a very close fight, and I thought that uh, Dawadu was eating shots, man. Yeah, he, he kind of landed uh, cleanly on Cub, and you know they were going back and forth, and I thought maybe Hakeem kind of came out on top at the end, but it really was a very back and forth fight. It was never like clearly dominant for one or the other, and um yeah, it was very close and competitive, and Cub got some good shots in, so I didn't hate it. I don't think it's a robbery. I think um, I would have liked to see a draw, maybe, rather than Cub winning, but at the end of the day, it kind of is what it is. It wasn't a robbery. If nobody can pull away and show dominance, then it's maybe a little difficult to complain about. Um, definitely not a robbery in my book. And then lastly, we had Khalil Roundtree versus uh, Chris uh, Dawkins. Dawkins was coming down from heavyweight to light heavyweight, and this was essentially his last uh, shot in the UFC, and he dropped the ball tremendously. Uh, Khalil absolutely molly whopped him. And, uh, yeah, Khalil's looking sharp, man, and he always does, but there was times in his career, like, when he got uh, knocked out by Johnny Walker with that vicious elbow, and then he had a couple of fights after that where he just kind of looked like he wasn't, he had one foot in, one foot out the door, I think he even said as much in some of his interviews, and for whatever reason, he's got that fire back, and boy, is he looking terrifying, um, he's looking terrifying, man, he's explosive power, uh, he's got, he's got such a unique style, and, He's got that Muay Thai background, and then, you know, he's just he's just an amazing fighter, man. And when he's all in, he's all in, and it was a fucking scary victory to see. Um, R.I.P. Chris Dawkins. Um, never really watched his fights all too closely, but looks like that's the end of the line for him in the UFC. That is a shame, and it is what it is. But, you know, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'm excited to watch this one. You have to let me know your thoughts. Um, if you enjoyed the content, do me a favor. Just click uh, subscribe on the YouTube video, like on the podcast app, subscribe, and... Um, Leave me a five-star review. And lastly, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you guys want to be a part of a little growing community, Mixed Martial Arts on Discord, uh, at some point we're going to start watching fights together, um, doing live streams where we can talk together, um, having guests on, all kinds of fun th plans I have for this group as it grows. Um, but you just got to click the description in the video and join it. Anybody can join. Invite a friend if you like it. And uh, yeah, we just kind of talk shit back and forth, uh, share our uh share news, topics, opinions, etc., etc. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. I will be back tomorrow with a UAP episode. I'm very excited. We've got a very interesting subject I'm going to be discussing. So until then, we'll talk next time. Peace out, guys.